Hello and welcome everyone, our heart here with part 1 of my new High Elf Let's Play, 3rd Age Total War and Dividing Conquer 4.5. I'll be releasing this series every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday going forward, so make sure you subscribe and ring that bell notification if you haven't done already, so you don't miss any of the uploads of this series going forward. So obviously we're playing as the High Elves, which is a new faction which has been made by combining two previously separate factions, the Realm of Imladris and the Elves of Linden. So you've now got a pretty interesting start position. You've got a split kingdom. You've got Imladris over in the east, Rivendell. And in the west, you've got Mithlond and the Grey Havens. So it should make for a pretty interesting campaign. Playing this on very hard, very hard difficulty. We're going for the long campaign victory objective, which requires us to hold 10 regions, including the Grey Havens, the Plains of Orodrin, Hidden Valley. And we need to eliminate the following factions, Mordor and the Dominion of Isengard. Faction overview is infantry focused. Uh, generally very strong roster, very expensive units, and very slow recruitment as we're elves. Notable units include the Mithlon Nobles, the Regian Smiths, and the Elderin Ri Roquen. This first episode will be an hour long, as will every 10th episode in the series going forward. And if you'd like an early hour special at part 5, then all we need to do is hit 2,000 likes on parts 1, 2, 3, and 4. It is of course completely optional, so if you're enjoying the content you do want to see an early hour special, then feel free to leave a like. But if you're not enjoying the content you don't want to leave a like, then feel free to leave a dislike. We'll still get part 5 regardless of whether we hit the target or not, it just determines whether part 5 is a 30 to 40 minute episode, or if we hit the target, an hour special. So without further ado, let's dive on in. So here we are on the campaign map, welcome back to Middle Earth. So we've got a couple of bits of information to go through first. We've got a Divide and Conquer brief that tells us about the submod, some of its key core features and things to watch out for. Then there's also a bit of information about unique scripts and events for the High Elves. So we'll go through all that first and then we'll crack on with the gameplay. Feel free to pause if you want to have a good old read through any of these information panels and messages. Uh, I'm just going to go through the key bits of information so we can crack on. So, Divide and Conquer brief, uh, key bits of information to take away are that recruitment is restricted by an event called the Barracks event. It will trigger between turn 60 and 64, and it unlocks your higher tier barracks buildings, and therefore your higher tier units. Uh, you'll need town halls or castle halls in order to train units or agents in settlements. Characters can die of old age, but not until they reach 120. It's four turns per year, so a 16-year-old character would take 416 turns to die of old age. So yeah, highly unlikely that any character in this campaign will die of old age. Uh, it'll be through me getting them killed off in battles, but hopefully that won't happen too much, if at all. Uh, many units get a visual upgrade uh, to their model when they're upgraded at a blacksmith. That's pretty darn cool. Uh, bodyguard units, so yeah. Um, some bodyguard units start off with over 77 units, but the game has a hard-coded limit that they can only ever replenish back up to 77. So if they start off with a bodyguard, I think some of them start off at like 89. Uh, once they go below 77... Uh, through battle and losing those troops they'll only ever replenish back up to 77 not the original 89 uh, there's no assassins but they have now added in merchants i don't know if high elves get them though i think there's only specific factions that can actually get merchants but everyone gets diplomats and spies um some factions have restricted town or castle development i don't think we need to worry too much about that very few factions can build boats but we can so that's okay uh, when a faction goes below on average three settlements then a, a doom stack will spawn uh, basically to try and reclaim a bit of land uh, and sort of re-establish themselves. It will only spawn once though, but it can offer a bit of a, an extra bit of challenge. Uh, rebel generals and roaming armies under the control of the independent realms will now attack you immediately. Oh goody, and then finally a scroll lock removes the whole of the UI. So that's the first message. Then we've got High Elves of Linden and Imladris. So obviously, yeah, they are combined now. Uh, they were previously High Elves of Linden and obviously uh, the Realm of Imladris or, or Rivendell were the, were the separate factions. Uh, I'm not going to read through all of this. It's just a bit of lore. So if you want to, feel free to pause. I'll just scroll on down and you can have a good old read through that if you wish. But there you go. And then finally, yeah, gathering our forces. Actually, I think there's one more. Gathering our forces. Um, this basically lets us know that we've got two types of barracks. So we've got the, uh, I think it's the, the Linden Barracks over in the west and the Noldor Barracks over in the east at Rivendell. Uh, that's the, the key takeaway there. Um, basically, if you lose Rivendell, then you can't recruit the Noldor units. And if you lose uh, Mithlond, then you can't recruit the, uh, the Lindar and Sindar units. Um, so yeah, that... Uh, yeah, but that's what it says right at the bottom here. There we go. And then finally, Lords of the Eldar. So this is a, a script within the game because Elrond has sent off his his sons, the twins, uh, Eladan and Elra here. They've gone off to the Dune Dane. I believe they come back. I think the script brings them back at turn 15. 
So you don't start off with too many lords, but you will get more coming back as uh, as the campaign progresses. You can also get um, Glorfindel, I believe. Uh, I think he comes back. It's either when you get 10 or 15 settlements, um, I believe. I think that's how the script works. I need to check precisely how it does. I th in fact, I think we can actually, through the green books at settlements, I think one of them does actually tell us the, uh, the requirements to get him, to unlock him as such. There's also uh, one of the most renowned famed smiths, uh, Dornor Noston, uh, and you get him when you reclaim the Eregion Forge at uh, Austin Edhill. So once we claim that, and Austin Edhill also has like unique units, I think, as well, uh, when you rebuild that forge. So yeah, he also appears when you claim that. So yeah, that's pretty much everything we need to know there. A recruitment report, a final reminder, basically saying that at the moment, our troops are, are low tier militia, uh, and we won't be able to get our best troops until the barracks event pops. Uh, that says between turn 64 and 68. The first one said between 60 and 64. So yeah, around about, you know, within the turn 60s, is when we'll get our best units available. And then finally, we've got war declared between various factions just popping off. Sometimes it comes up in a, in a unified panel message. Sometimes it comes up with lots of different scrolls. Let's go through all that. And then we'll take a look at our own diplomacy just so that we can uh, have a ganders at uh, what's going on at the start. So we are allied to the Northern Dúnedain and Breland. We are at war with Goblins of Moria, Remnants of Angmar, and the independent realms but interestingly we don't actually have to eliminate the goblins of moria or angmar probably will want to eliminate the goblins of moria though because they are just going to hamper us right from the get-go as uh, we're about to see uh, angmar potentially um i was reading some guys from arake galu dirathon the mod lead of dividing conquer uh, who said that if um if you don't if the player doesn't do anything about angmar then eventually they will roll through the dunedine so maybe we will need to uh send a force north but that will be uh, nothing that we focus on anytime soon so yeah we've got 400 turns to try and complete our victory objective uh hold 10 regions including mythlond baladur imladris and we've got to eliminate mordor and the dominion of isengard so basically carve a path all the way down to isengard and then go to, to mordor we might if we can try and destroy mordor in this game by getting the ring and then dropping it into uh, into a volcano i hear that's the uh, the trendy thing to do these days but yes we'll see how we get on now in terms of imladris there are kind of kind of two key strategies you can go for with them you can either sit in imladris and turtle up for 15 to 20 turns or so uh, so i've heard to just build up your economy because at the moment we're going to start losing money uh the moment we start doing stuff um so you can do that but that sounds very boring just sitting in, in imladris or you can be, the second sort of tactic is to be aggressive and try and go for Zag Kala. And by hitting that early, we can potentially cripple the uh, goblins of Moria's sort of attacks on us. They'll, they'll still send uh, a trickle and a steady flow of troops as they progress through the campaign towards them in Ladris until we take them out. But if we take them out of Zag Kala, then we can deal a pretty decisive blow. They've got a large army in there at the moment, but I think that's, that's the tactic I'm going to go for, the more aggressive tactic. It could... It could lead to an early campaign fail, but I'd rather go for the, the, the more interesting approach, I think, rather than just turtling up it in Labdris. So um, we've got Doondime Warriors over here. Let's bring them all into Imladris straight away just to try and uh, stop our funds completely uh, falling out the bottom of our economy. But when we're going to start spending money, that's going to that's gonna kill it. Now, I would normally go for Builders Halls because they reduce... Um, building costs and building times however our economy is going to be in ruins for a fair few turns so we're not going to be able to build anything in the next few turns even if we get these builders halls because we're going to be in the red for a little bit uh, so i think it's better to go for communal farming first because that will uh, improve our population growth it also gives a little bit more money not enough to save our economy but it will start at least in the background trickling away improving uh, our population, increasing our population, I should say. Um, and then that will lead to slightly higher income and what have you that way. So yeah, that's what I'm going to go for. Communal farming everywhere. I will recruit units as well. Uh, we want to get as many as possible out so that we can then go for Zagkala as soon as possible. Elrond has a really cool bodyguard unit as well, I should say. He is thankfully, he's also got free upkeep. 
because he's a, a unique unit they've made for him. He's got Gilgalad's company. And yeah, basically, from what I've seen, Elrond can deal with, I would say, uh, a third to a near half stack of Moria goblins on his own just sitting in, in Imladris. Ideally, we will want to get the armory when we can at Imladris so that a garrison will be provided when it gets hit. Uh, there's also mines there as well. So we will want to improve our economy. I'm not going for the, you know, the the, the, the safe economy route uh, strategy, though, because that would be just turtling up at Imladris for quite a while. Uh, we're going to go for the aggressive push approach and uh, and see if we can if we can make it through that, because that sounds way more fun. So, yeah. Uh, uh, Elrond, go back in there for now. We'll wait until we get those new units in two turns. We probably won't wait for the Doondine Scouts, although we could always bring them over because it'll probably take a turn to see. So yeah, we'll move once the units that take two turns are done. Uh, we start off with Lindar Bowman. And we've got Doondine Wardens as our spears. That'll be quite nice. So yeah, that's the plan over at Imladris. So I, I quite like this split star. Actually, it's a lot of fun. We also do have another character over here, uh, Gildor Inglorian, which is a fantastic name. And he starts off sort of in the center. You have a choice then to send him west or to send him east. Now, sending him east probably would would be helpful for Elrond and all of those goblins uh, going after him. Help out, you know, a little bit more. Every little helps, basically. But if we take Zagkala, we're probably then just going to have to turtle up and sit between Imladris and Zagkala. Or we might end up losing Zagkala and have to fall back to Imladris. So I think I'd rather send him west where he can actively do some more aggressive pushing because there's loads of bandit regions over here in the west that we can quickly gobble up so the more troops we have over here the more we can kind of push over here basically the west becomes our economic uh, powerhouse and uh, the east with rivendell eventually will be our military powerhouse especially when we get to the Eregian forge so and also it's far fewer turns i think it's only what three turns to go west where it's about five maybe even six to go east so we will send you over towards the under towers What's your bodyguard? You've got the uh, Calaquendi Lords. Okay, that's pretty cool. Calaquendi, that's a, that's, a, that's a nice word to say. Uh, so yeah, we'll go for the Under Towers. We'll probably aim to take that first if that army doesn't go for us, and then we'll deal with that army. Uh, there is apparently a very good mining settlement down here. So we will look to go for that. Um, so Arlond... Orlond, and we've got Mythlond, which is where we've also got uh, Kiradan, who I believe is the the oldest of all the, the elves in Middle-earth right now. Uh, lived for ages. I don't know if that specifically says it. I honestly can't be bothered to read all of that. Um, but we are likely not going to be able to use him for quite some time. He's currently got free upkeep at Mythlond, and that's rather good because, as you're about to see, he costs 850 upkeep so yeah another thing that would uh, ruin our income uh, even more than it than it than it currently is he's got mythlon nobles which are very powerful infantry but yeah unfortunately oh kiradan you've got to chill at mythlon for now we will take all of your units though because we're gonna link on up with um inglorian over there and also with these guys i don't think the bandit's gonna push up towards us so i'm gonna risk pulling both of you out not leaving anyone there to defend and the merchant no that merchant's wolf is way too mm, it's quite a nice boost but it's not doing anything for growth and that's what we need to think about right now so communal farming here did we do that at mythlond no we did not communal farming there and then unfortunately we can't get one in here we could go for the grain exchange actually for a vineyard that gets me a spy a spy actually would be kind of useful we won't be able to recruit it though will we because in three turns we'll be in the red um, also, oh, we need to recruit more more troops here, probably. Yeah. Lindar Bowman and Long Spears or Lindar Guards. Lindar Guards. So, yeah, now we can't build that. So, we can build everywhere except one of our settlements. I think that's not too bad. As long as we're getting that, that growth going everywhere, that should be a pretty decent um, payoff long term anyway. Can't recruit anything there. Recruiting there. Can't do anything. It's just ships. So we do actually have some ships here, which, yeah, we'll send over to the port here at Forlond. And we'll take the Lindar Bowman and the Lindar Longspears. We need every woman that we can gather to start with to just focus on grabbing the Undertowers, then going down to this mine down here. And then there's some rebels down there. So I assume there's a settlement 
down in this area. Um, so, yeah, we've, we've got to be careful with our battles. Lionheart, you can't be gung-ho with this. Proceeds to go for the super aggressive gung-ho uh, approach in the east. Yes, uh, <laughs> we've got to be very careful and, and minimize our casualties as much as possible. So we will likely be fighting every single one of these battles for a good, a good long part of this game. Because while our economy is in tatters, it will eventually recover and improve. But elven units just take a really long time to become available anyway. Even after the barracks event, I don't think they're particularly fast. So, yeah, it is, it's going to be a while before we can get up to kind of full stack. So we have to be careful with what we've got. So we're bringing all of them over. We've popped you guys uh, in the ship there. I've gone for the communal farming. Gildor and Glorian's going west. Um, yeah, go to the Undertowers. There you go. And Imladris is all set with everything there. Good. Right, let's end our first turn, which will also fire off some more scripts and things like that. I don't know if there's any more event messages. But we will find out. This first end turn is uh, sometimes a bit longer than future ones, just because uh, lots of factions getting their, their unique scripts firing. Okay. Oh, they're actually marching out with that army. Oh, they're sending it away. Even better. Okay, so clearly they've not heard about my my super aggressive play approach. They're clearly thinking we're taking option one, which is to turtle up in in Imladris. Uh, oh no no no, oh no no no, goblins of Moria. I plan on doing a sneaky strike. Oh, what's that? Take a rebel settlement up there. That uh, is is not going to happen. We don't have the forces to divert up there, unfortunately. I mean, we could we could send Elrond up that way, but I'd much rather strike Zagalop. Maybe once we're done with that, if we have to concede it, we can go for that. How many turns have we actually got? 15. Eh, might be doable. Might be doable. We can't do anything this turn, though. We've got to wait one more turn for all those units, then we'll move. I might have... Actually, if I queue up that Diplomat, can I get him? I'm not sure. We're actually still projected Um, a little bit of... Uh, a little bit of profit there. But that's because these guys haven't been built yet. And that, that will cripple things. You've got free upkeep. Good. So yeah, everybody Onward. head on over. Lord. Link Swiftly. on up there. Elves. Onward. Oh, we've reached Onward. the Shire. Lovely. Pop in and visit some uh, some hobbits. Here Elves. the Bagginses are nice. Uh, that's all we can do there. Yeah. I was just thinking, oh, I'll build some stuff. Wait, no, we can't. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, so this is going to be fun. How many turns are we going to be in the red for? Place your bets in the comment section now. We moved over there. That is that is everything we can do. Not much to do these, these first few early turns. We'll hopefully see that army disappear. That means I can sneak on in to uh, Agkala. That'd be good. And take... Uh, that out. Oh yeah, we've got our ship. That's what I needed to do. That's fine. That should drop them over where I wanted them to. The dwarves are coming to uh, have a chat to us. I'm gonna avoid doing the uh, the map selling exploit. I, I think it's fair to consider it an exploit, to be fair. Uh, which is where I would, in previous Third Age Divide and Conquer campaign, send a diplomat off to every other faction and just trade them my map information for a thousand or two thousand gold each time. Um... Yeah, I, I think I think that's uh, pretty exploity. Oh no, they didn't drop them off. Damn. Oh, that's fine. They can still move. Good. Uh, yeah, I think that's, that's fairly exploity. So I don't really wanna wanna do that in this uh, campaign. Keep moving. Ah, oh, looks like we can't reach. I think it's because we got blocked going through the Shire. That's fine. We'll have all of you guys group one up. Uh, I'm just. I don't want to go too close to that one. We've got those new units. So let's bring them over. Just bring everyone together and then we'll go to the Under Towers. If they come and attack us, we've actually got enough troops there. We should be fine. War declared between Isengard and Rohan. Nobody saw that coming, did they? Okie dokie. But yeah, I'm going to avoid doing... Uh, doing the diplomat map 
peddling exploit. I think in this one. Extra, extra challenge, Lionheart, do that. Although, if these dwarves come and have a chat to us at Forlond, I will definitely see if I can uh, still uh, sell off my maps to them, I guess. I just won't do it with them. No way, that's the same thing, basically, isn't it? No, we can we can still, as long as the as long as we can make a favourable deal, that's fine. But yeah, I won't purposely sell off my maps. Right. Are they still recruiting? I think they are. I don't think that diplomat is. Oh, no, we're in the red already. Oh, dear. Here we go. Right. How long are we in the red for? Uh, let's take... Oh, dear. We're leaving Imladris exposed as well. I don't really want to leave a unit behind. I think we're, we're, we're going to go for it. We're going to go... Ooh, this, is, this is maximum ballsy approach. Leaving Imladris... Open. Oh, I, could, I guess I could always leave that cavalry behind. Elves. But yeah, I guess maybe once we take this, we send Elrond straight back to Imladris. Once we take uh, Zagkala. We'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Right. For the light. You're all good there. Ships. Uh, nothing to do with you. I could... I mean, yes, if we really want to, we could disband them now to save some money. But I probably can't recruit ships for quite some time. So let's just keep them. Um, we could always actually then sail, sail some forces towards the mid to late game. All the way down. And bring them up over here to go for Mordor. That might be quicker than going via land. I guess it depends how much progress we've made uh, through Isengard Elves. by then. Yeah, no, there's nothing else left to do, Lionheart. You have no money. You can't do anything else. Right, end the turn. Oh, hello, dwarves. What are you peddling today? You want trade rights and map information. Let's see. That is generous. Well, no, I'm demanding their map information. Okay. Let's see if uh, we can make that generous to balanced. We're asking for a thousand. There we go. So we were selling off our, our trade agreements. I think that that's fine. That's not the same as me uh, exploiting the map info. So we now have got 117 gold in our treasury until it gets back to our next turn and then it, it dies. It jumps off a cliff. Yeah, there we go. Minus 2,000. Oh, we've got a candidate for adoption. Uh, yes, yeah, for Elrond as well. Because now... Where are you? Come, my brothers. Why aren't you over here in Imladris? That's, why, that's the whole reason I was accepting you. To chill over there. Have you gone over here? I bet you've gone over here. Yes, of course you have. God damn it. Is that because... Oh, that's because that's my capital, not Imladris. Ah, yes, they moved it. And they've also brought up their army there. Um, okay. Well. Yeah, I was really hoping he was going to spawn here because then I'd have someone to chill at Imladris. That army, it might come and break the siege, but actually that could work in our favour because we could probably deal with that army and the three units in there, but... If we press through, they're going to have defenders, aren't they? So this will be an easier way of drawing them out. So let's do... Let, <laughs> oh, this is so aggressive, but let's go for it. Let's risk it all. And yeah, let's bring the cavalry over. Unless this army suddenly... Mm, if it cuts back across to Imladris, we can intercept it. So we should be okay. Oh, the diplomat's going as well. That's good. That is good indeed. Right. Um, you guys are going to go for the Under Towers. But can we bring in... Gildor and Glorian? We can't. Because we've been stopped. So let's bring him on over. And yeah, we'll just link you guys all up. And then we'll strike next turn. Might as well have our full strength rallied. Um pop you into a settlement, you'd probably get free upkeep and you would improve. Although you're a really strong unit, actually. You're probably worth having in the army. By the light of so let's just send you to join up with everybody over there. Because, yeah. Income be damned at the moment. That's only 310 upkeep for the uh, Heliquendi Lords. That's not bad at all. That is not bad at all. Right, let's see what happens at Zagkala. I imagine 
that army that was originally Zagkala that went south and is now coming back will come and break the siege. I'll be very, very, very surprised if it doesn't. And it's 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 gone for the uh, the obvious option. So we have our first battle. Huzzah! It'll also be our last battle if we cock this up. <laughs> Loses Elrond on turn four. Right, they've got Snarga Skirmishers. Uruk Overseers. Ooh, their defense is solid, isn't it? 53 of them. What have you got? Ah, Wild Riders. Well, good thing I've got the uh, Dunedain Wardens. There's my spears. And then what have you got in this force? Oh, more Wargs. Uh, heavy Goblin Archers. They sound nasty. But nothing else for it. In we go. Put an end to this evil. Couldn't have said it better, Elrond. Put an end to this evil. Oh, look, Gandalf. Good luck, dear elves, against the Goblin Horde. Ooh. Right, start deployment. Is there a good position to turtle up against? Because that's what we're going to have to do. Yeah, over here looks nice. Oh, yeah, very nice little... Yes. And then we can deal with the reinforcements, which will be uh, coming in behind the garrison from Zagkala. What about over here on the left? Mm, that's kind of nice here. But I don't think it's as good as that right deployment. So let's go Let's go for deployment over here. And these guys can also do shield wall, which is good. We'll have a look at Elrond and all of his units. Oh, I didn't check to see what his power of the Eldar ability does. Ah, damn. I need to check that in the scripts. Note to self. Lionheart, do that. on you next turn. And if I forget, someone please remind me in the comment section. <laughs> right, yeah. You guys go in loose formation for sure because they've got... Oh. Why aren't you guys going... There we go, loose formation. They've got those uh, heavy goblins. Uh, right. Have a quick little looky. Oh no, probably would help if I didn't stack them all on top of one another. So, Gilgalad's company. And there's Elrond. Incredibly awesome looking armor. I love those helmets. Beautiful stuff. So, we've also got uh, Lindar guards. Fairly standard swordsmen. And we've got uh, Amanyar swordmasters. Very nice. So, yeah. Pin him with the spears and then... Charge them in with the sword masters. Let's just pop you guys there and have you guys on the right. I can't really do much else. Have a quick little look at those archers. The Lindar Bowman. Very nice. And then we've got the uh, the Dunedain Wardens. Oh, and we've got cavalry as well. Don't forget about the cavalry, Lionheart. Probably will, but don't. Uh, do we need them? No, we probably don't need them. Also, what am I doing over this side of the map? There we go. This is the side I want. Yeah, I'll have them there harassing the reinforcements coming on in. Yeah, none of you guys on skirmish mode. Good. Right. Start battle. And then we want to pull further back. And then we, yeah, we probably will want you guys in shield wall, but let's just get you guys over here first. There we go. Right, so initial force of the army that is breaking this siege. What's the units I'm most worried about are the wargs and potentially those uh, heavy uh, goblin archers. They've got some heavy goblin infantry as well by the looks of it. units of wargs. Because the general, general's unit is a, a warg unit. And then the reinforcements coming on in. Go and harass them with the Dundown scouts. Place your bets. How long till my scouts are dead? This is the 
way. The way to where? Where are we going? Right. Let's pop you guys in uh, shield wall. Spread real thin. But it'll be enough to hold. He hopes. How's my cab doing? Oh, yeah. All right, so it's snugger skirmishes. Oh, yeah, bring them down. And we'll deal with the Uruk overseers as they advance. Yeah, those uh, skirmishes with the javelins. Don't do that much damage, but the sheer number of them can really rather hurt. Gotta keep on where the wog, keep an eye on where the wogs are. Where the wogs are. That should probably have you guys right in front there. doing yeah snuggers are going down they've not actually used no don't do not do not go up towards the wags you will get probably butchered just bring down those skirmishes and then we can bring down the overseers if you still got ammo i'm glad you're under attack right yeah my arch the firing here we go Elven Fury. Turn the might of Imladris and Linden combined. Well, 7% so far. Oh, oh, oh. First boo boo. This is cavalry gets charged. Come on, cavalry. It's me, though. Come on. You guys were counting down the minutes until there was a lion fail. I'm sure. Okay, there's wogs coming this way as well. We should probably, in that case, pull back. Where have the other wog unit gone there? I kind of feel like you guys can actually... Do that a bit. Should be able to bring those overseers down with the sword masters. See, can we pick off the? Oh no, they're pulling back. Only half the enemy force remains. That's good though. They've just brought their archers forward. them down. I'd almost be tempted to charge them down. So that wag unit's put all the way back there. And what about the other one? All the way over there. This is it. Focus on the overseers. One percent. Yeah, I'm gonna try and knock out those uh, heavy goblin archers if I can. Might draw them all back in again. But they're focused on going after these archers right now. Quick, 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 quick! Just a quick charge in. Pull you guys back straight away. Just to draw them toward us. That's what you want to do. Disrupt them a bit. Oh yeah, that was a lot of... A lot of losses on the cab. Probably not worth doing. Swordmasters are getting stuck in. 
the Snugger are gone. Good. Pull back. Reform. Rook Overseers. Here we go. Yeah, I really should check what the power of the Elder does. I don't want to pop it too early in case it's a, a fatigue hit one. Like, uh... Uh, Imra Hills in my Dolamro series. Probably should try and take out the Wargs a bit. With the Archers. That's it. They're going straight in for those Spears. Oh, they're going to go wider for the Swordmasters. Uh, the Spears should hold them a bit. No. no okay. Noises. They did go into the Swordmasters, but it wasn't a great charge. And the Swordmasters should butcher them. Okay, you guys flank and then charge in. 4%. If we can get away with less than 10%, I'll be a happy boy. But remember though, there's still wargs up here. Right, cavalry, just start hunting down the, the runners. That we're smashing the wild riders back here. Appreciate this isn't meant to be the the toughest campaign due to the sheer power of uh, of elves and all that. Oh, that's going to catch them out there a bit. Push forward. Yeah, they've broken. Oh, you guys are out of ammo. That could have been a big charge. Oh, they held. There we go. I'm going to get these sword masters involved. They're not... They, oh, they bugged out. They've not entered the battlefield properly. That's weird. They shouldn't be over the limit. Push them back. 11%. Okay. A few more casualties than I would like. Okay, they're broken. You guys go into the arches. My Lindar guards charge this lot down. That sweep along there has just broken a load. Nice work, cavalry. I don't know what it does, but let's pop power of the Eldar. Only half the enemy force remains. Look, my cavalry get some heals. Right, now we want all of you guys off guard mode. We need to keep chasing the enemy down. Problem is, if these guys don't come in properly, I don't know if that bugs out the battle or what. Or also, if uh, it doesn't bug out the battle. Then we don't get the settlement straight away. We've got to fight again. The enemy army flees the field. Pursue and run them down. Hmm. Might just run a unit over towards them and see if that kills them. If they engage with it. It just says they're not on the battlefield, but... Oh, 
Oh, might as well kill off as much of the army as possible. I'm just having this one unit of cavalry now. It's quite a useful uh, addition to our forces. Seems just running down units at the end of battle. After them. Elrond head over here. And try and run these guys through them. Waiting to enter battle still. Oh no, they're going to kill him. Nice. Yay! Can't get those guys at the back. No, I'm not this done. A great I'm not done. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so that took us down to only 11% losses, though. We lost 134. That's not bad, considering what we were facing. Take that. Who got the most kills? Scouts, 212. Yeah, running them down at the end. Next, though, would be 166 and our bowmen. Elrond got 122. And those scouts got 12 healed. I did some of my bowmen. Nice. Nice, 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 nice. Now, we've probably captured a load of them. As tempting as it would be to take the ransom, I'm going to exterminate them. Because I don't want these guys hitting us again another turn, especially if we've got to sit here and now siege uh, Zagkala, because that unit kind of bugged out. Oh, that is incredibly tempting, but no, kill them all. Please say we took the settlement. We must defend these <laughs> yes, we did. Ah, oh, thank the gods. Right, we're going to have to exterminate because it's not going to be our culture type. So, rip. Rip all the gobos living in, living in there. Living in there? Living in there. We just need to think about sending a unit to Imladris. Possibly the cavalry, although maybe Elrond. Really hoping that guy that spawned on him would have been uh, over at Imladris. That would have been super useful. Um, oh, yeah. So you'll, you'll see that um, uh, Arwen isn't on the family tree. She's been replaced by uh, Al uh, Maria here, who is just, I believe, a, a made up character. That's because Arwen is on the, the Dunedain faction tree because she's married to Aragorn. Um, yeah, there we go. So the twins will return, apparently, in, in 10 more turns, I think. I don't think we have to do anything for that. Uh, in fact, let me just check. Imladris, does it tell you in the script here? No, maybe it's... I think it's over at the capital, which I keep thinking is Imladris, but it's not. It's Mythlond. I think they did that to try and ease uh, corruption. Oh, here we go. So, yeah, this, the twins return. At turn 15, you will need to move a diplomat to Ossul. Oh, okay, we've got to move him to Ossul. Right. Where is Ossul? Uh, twins will spawn the next turn. And then uh, Glorfindel's return only spawns after you have 15 regions. Okay, yeah, so I was right. Yeah, to, well, well, I said 10 to 15. 15 regions or Angmar only has two. Austin Ed Hill, Captain's region to unlock the Noldor Barracks. Upgrade uh, the Gawaith I Miradain to unlock your top two elite units. That's that's useful there. That's on there. And yeah, also our Lindar Barracks can only be built on coasts or major rivers. Nordal Barracks can only be built uh, in hill, mountain, or grassland regions after Austin Ed Hill is reclaimed. Um, so yeah, we have to reclaim Austin Ed Hill. So that's that's kind of another reason why I didn't want to sit in Imladris for, for a little bit. I wanted to start pushing back because Austin Ed Hill's like down here somewhere. I mean, it, it will be it will be easier to just sit there and turtle up. We, we might have to we might have to backpedal on that, and we might have to yes, turtle up. My uh, you know what? I've, we've already got... Um, we've already got... Trade military access with Dune Dino. Probably not map info, but I, I said I wouldn't just do a... I mean, I could trade map info for, for map info. I could actually do that <laughs> rather than selling it. It's mainly to go make trade agreements. So we'll probably... The problem is we can't get up and around the mountains. 
until up here. But that's that's where we're gonna have to go because Goblin Town. I don't think we can get through there. But let's let's send them up here to see that settlement Tomorrow's that we're meant to be planned out. getting two thousand gold if we do a mission for. I mean, maybe you guys will say it's worth now abandoning Zagkala and going straight for that. And also Elrond. Back to him, Ladris, or does he chill here? Uh, we could send the cavalry back, I think. That's probably worth doing, just so there's at least a unit in there defending it. I don't know, will we get any defenders when it's attacked, or only once we've got the armory? Because there's that army over there I've got to keep an eye on. Have a taste of my blade. Can that actually... I'm gonna stick you. Ooh, I don't actually know if that can make it to him, Ladris, in a goat. I'm gonna Ooh, stick you. that's a little bit scary. Possibly. Possibly. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Right, well, we need... We might have to send... They'd have to see just for at least a turn, though, wouldn't they? So we'd be able to partially move. Also, do we want to immediately give up Zagkala after that fight? I feel like if we, if we hold on to it, it sh this should cripple... The goblins of Moria for a bit. I don't think there's anything we can destroy. Let me know your thoughts regarding Zagkala and what happens there. Because uh, we'll deal with that next episode. But to finish things off for today. Another 15 minutes. Let us attack the uh, the Undertowers. And we're going to bring this other lord in as well. I guess from here I could always send him east. But it's going to take a really long time. Probably just better off waiting until I get another event. Oh good god. Look at the projected profits. I don't think I've ever been like trending this far into the red before M much concern but have we got one more turn till those communal farming oh and these guys are coming to attack elven rebels oh they'll be nasty as long as they don't attack my settlements when they say elven elven are these guys elven rebels no they're bandits okay so it, it does it does sort of uh elude the units they'll have but yeah, hopefully you're not going to attack my settlements. You're just going to go for my armies. So that's something to worry about as well. Right, under towers, we're taking you. We can go straight on in. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to fight this. Woodland Hunters, Cellsword. Cellsword's going to be nasty. Bandits. Actually, before we do do this, hang on. I want to see what Elrond's ability is that I popped. What does that actually do? Mr. Elrond. Um... Address. Special ability. Here we go. Power of the Eldar. Charges one. Duration six seconds. Temporarily, uh, temporary f uh, fatigue reduction plus one hundred fifty percent army combat effectiveness. Oh wow! Temporarily locks army morale. Rallies own routing troops. Oh wow! So if if you're all suddenly you suddenly see them all breaking, quickly grab him and, and press it. So again, I think most of these special abilities do sort of tend to lend themselves to the mid to late part of a battle just to um you know focus obviously either a lot of them come with a, a fatigue hit afterwards although this, this one doesn't seem to do that doesn't seem to have a negative to it and the doll amroth one did We've got a lot of uh a lot of items as well what is ring Ooh, plus one fertility well done elrond anyway right we've checked that out let's under tower i don't know my way around the map Let's Come, claim boy. these under towers. Them. So yeah, again, two bandits, two woodland hunters, and one cell sword unit, which is the the big bad. Let's have a quick look through our stat. No, I can't do that. I can do that now though. Elves. Have a quick look through our stats. Lindar Bowman and the Lindar Guards, we know them. What about these guys? Lindar uh, Mariners. So they're dual sword, or it looks like sword and axe units. That's pretty... And they've got a weapon type as well. Ooh, very good. Nice. Uh, the Linden Long Spears. Very basic spear unit. Okay, that's fine. That is all good. And then you guys, have you got the same... Yeah, the Calaquendi. Which are... Yeah, good defense. They can go off to the Cell Swords then. Right, finally, he fights the battle. Oh. In we go. Underworld. underworld under the under the towers. <laughs> Any wise words? I didn't. I didn't give Elrond a chance to do a battle speech. You guys got anything worthwhile to say? There's two of you. Put your heads together. 
battle, lads. I mean, straight to the point. Sure, could have done with a bit of a pep talk, but okay. Yes, you will fight as one. Good. Um, right. Well, we're going to want to hit them from as many sides as we can. And we can deploy on two sides to start with. So we'll go for a two-side split. With... Uh, uh, oh, yeah, two archers. Yeah, we've got four total. Two on each side. We just need to take out their bandits. So I don't want them doing too much damage to mine. So I might actually charge in with my infantry. Fairly sharpish. I think I'll send these guys to go round on the right. And then you guys firing from here. Send these two in. And then we've got the lords, which are, if I put them here, then they can flank on round and go for that top, e top entry point. No one's firing yet, so that's good. So it gives me a chance to position these guys in. So yeah, those cell swords, nasty. They've got the woodland hunters there. They've got hunters there and the bandits there. So we'll six times speed it. We get on round. Oh, these guys are oh, their pikes. Ah. We don't want to draw the enemy arrow fire just yet. Actually, it's probably a better thing that I'm leaving you guys to walk. Oh, what's that? Light of Elbereth. Oh, I should, I should have checked what you've got. I didn't. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> uh, so you're, once we're all engaged, I'm assumed. I'm, I'm assumed. I'm assuming it'll be fine to pop. Note to self, Lionheart. Go through all your lords. We'll check it out before we end the, the episode. For sure. Okay, right. Slow it down. Let's move in with me archers. I mean, if my archers can make short work of their bandit troop, maybe I should do that before I send in my other my other guys. I just feel like archers are most certainly our most valuable resource right now. Over in the, over here in the west, there's not too much. There's no real threat. The clans of Nedwaith aren't going to take, I wouldn't have thought, any, if many, of the territories, the rebel territories over here. It's just mainly the, the, the bandits. We need to make sure we, we uh, don't lose too many troops in so we can keep our momentum going. Oh, look, there's little, little hobbit holes. What I might do, I could risk sending the generals in to draw their attack. This is pretty risque. But let's move them here. Here we go. They're all being hit. So confusion into their ranks. So yeah, I need my archers taking out their archers, ideally. Okay, these guys are coming out that way. That swordsman, that is. You know what? I don't want to die to them straight away. So let's just draw them out. Nope. No, we're getting hit by arrow fire, but that's fine. Oh, we are decimating these guys. That's it. Save my archers. Oh, are you guys going to do the old cheeky slip past me? Also, archers, yeah, do not go in there. Like this, we will smash the enemy. Go over here instead. Close in on them. Ready elves. Those cell swords gone. They've gone back in there. I haven't even moved these guys in yet. Might as well hold them back. That's it. Throw your javelins. Bring them down. Why can't you still hit them? It's the range, I guess. That's fine. Oh, 
Run away. Hold up, hold up, hold up. 3%. Stuck in. So we could probably go in with these guys to harass them now. We just got to get those cell swords at the same time. How, how well are we doing here? The enemy are badly bloody. Yeah, doing okay. Lost half their men. Okay, they're all running that way. So I propose these archers now go for the cell swords. And in fact, because you guys are pikes. You guys rush in here and then pike up. Then we move in with the generals. And one goes to flank, though. Oh, these guys are broken. Okay, time to go. Time to go. Go kill all of them. Fire it will off. Just make sure you guys are firing on them for sure. <laughs> You've come back this way. Okay. That's fine. We've got pikes now though. To engage. Our men have taken control of the city. Get stuck in. Don't know what this does, but I'm gonna pop it. guys don't get into the cell swords. Let my pikes do that. My generals and my archers. Ten percent. We should come out of this with less than ten percent casualties. Happy days. And pretty much the only one that's really been hit is that one unit of Lindar guards, which I might just merge up to the other two. Yeah, they are melting. Okay, archers. Get you in here. Stop firing. Bring them down. Yeah, they're just melting. Nice. General lies dead. Behold, That's what we want. Foe runs. Beautiful. Uh, I was about to say continue, but we don't need to do that Be at all. By the victory we have won here Lost today. 91. Get any heals? We got nine of the guards healed and seven of them. Most kills. I'm seeing 98 from the bowmen and 96 from the guards. Sweet. Beautiful stuff. All right, well, I think that's been a it's been a good start. Let's just ignore the fact that my economy is incredibly in the red. We should be able to occupy the undertowers, though, I'd have thought, rather than we don't need to exterminate it or sack it. I wouldn't have thought. I'm assuming it's our culture group. Ah, we could probably go take out that army now with our with our bowmen. I could leave one of my lords behind, be but it might more. be worth leaving the. Uh, Claim it for the free peoples. That was a pitiful amount to get. It might be worth... Because you're so strong. It's probably worth keeping you both together, right? Um, I'm thinking it might be worth merging the guards, maybe? I mean, how many are they meant to have? I can't actually remember. Um, I 
But yeah, we could we could always leave that 91 there because we're going to want to keep pushing. We'll want to go for the, the mining settlements down here. Or I don't know if we need to bother with these rebels or not. I don't know if they're they're going to go for my settlements because we obviously emptied all of them to push. Projected profits, minus 2,436. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, we might need to go back to him, Ladris. Um... But we'll have to see how that all goes next turn. But yeah, we'll probably... I think we've done everything we need to do for this turn. Although, can we can we jump on out with... Uh, uh, not everyone, though, right? No, oh, everyone but him. So we could leave him behind and go take out that army right now. To say to you, scum. Without that extra lord. So we could go fight the battle. Although, before we do that, what is your... Special ability... Special ability, it does. Uh, oh, three charges. Okay, so yeah, Elrond's was only one charge. So three charges, cooldown 120 seconds, duration 30 seconds, plus 150% own army combat effectiveness, plus five own troop morale, plus three allied troop morale. Okay, so yeah, again, but th that's good though, because there's no... No fatigue kit from that. So actually, yeah, seeing as we get three uses, we want to use that within the first engagement. Once we have our, our battle lines drawn and then the other two charges throughout the rest of the battle. So yeah, okay. I think we'll kick things off next time and then jumping on out with everyone except uh, Rinian to go take out these bandits. And then we'll probably have to put some units back into the under towers. Then the rest of them can push for the mine down here. Or we could hang back and deal with these guys. But I think we should, we should push for that mine. That might be enough to get us positive. I'm also hoping that once we do another end turn, that negative might not be so bad because we'll have the communal farming. Which at least... Over time, go away, Adobe. I don't need to know about the updates right now. I'm doing a video. Yeah, at least over time, that should get the population growth going. Over here, though, the question is, with Elrond, do we stay in Zankala and try and hold on to it? Or should we pull back either a small part of the force, just the scouts for now to Imladris? I think that's probably I think that's probably what we will do. The scouts to Imladris, and then at least wait one turn. If they suddenly send a massive stack to Imladris, then we'll need to go and send the rest of our force that way but i think we'll keep elrond here for now just because i believe zagkala has a really good choke point map almost almost um thermopylae-esque in its uh, in its defense where you can sit right at right at the back of the um the sort of thin tunnel that's created you can wait way back in your own settlement once they breach the gate and then you can just blast them as they as they come down this choke point to you so we might actually be able to do fairly well holding on to zagkala which is what i'd like to try and do hence the uh the choice to go for that sort of strategy but yeah as always i welcome all your advice let me know down in the comment section as i said at the start of the video if you would like part five to be an early hour special then feel free to leave a like it is completely optional though so if you're not enjoying the content you don't want to leave a like then feel free to leave a dislike but if we can get 2,000 likes on this episode part one part two part three and part four then part five will be an early hour special if not it'll just be 30 to 40 minutes and then i do hour specials every 10 episodes anyway so yes hope you've enjoyed this uh, new Third Age Dividing Conquer 4.5 campaign. I'm really excited, if you can't tell, uh, to be back playing as elves once more in Middle Earth. So yes, until the next one, don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, take pride to the Legion. Check out my affiliates and sponsors, Games Planet and Overclockers UK. Till the next one, ciao for now.